Hi everyone, I'm Shanti, the artist behind Shanti Fine Arts. Mother's Day is coming up, so I wanted to paint something that is similar to the subject. So I chose this hummingbird with its nestling in their nest, which was a perfect subject. So today's tutorial is a watercolor painting tutorial for this hummingbird and its nest. I'm starting off with wetting the whole area around the drawing of the bird and its nest by water. And my aim is to create a very wet surface but not leave like whole pools of water. A very wet surface, what it will do is when I start applying color, it will automatically blend the different colors that I am putting. Here my aim is to get a blurry background with a variety of colors between yellow and blue and lots of greens so I'm trying to get different shades of green starting from the lightest with a lot of yellow to the darkest with a lot of blue and sometimes a little bit of brown as well um, to get that nature kind of feeling around the bird but at no point I'm trying to put in a lot of detail in the background and uh, what this does is gives the bird which I intend to paint very realistically with a lot of detail the prominence it should get and you can see that when I'm putting in colors in the background it is automatically kind of mixing with one another without me to trying too hard to blend them and the occasional streak marks that I am leaving are here and there it's it's kind of intentional. I kind of wanted the ray-like looking leaf-like feeling at the background. Once the background is more or less done with different kinds of colors at different areas, I move on to the bird and you will see that in the entire painting I have broken it down into small sections and in each section I am starting with the lightest color. For the beak and parts of the head I am starting with a grayish mauve color and it is almost close to no color at all. For the areas that are closer to the eyes I'm adding a little bit more green to those areas and areas that are absolutely surrounding the eyes I will also add some yellow and brown to that area. Now you will see that once I start adding additional layers I am slowly building up color which is generally the thumb rule with watercolor that you start with the lightest of colors and then slowly build towards the darker colors. In case of watercolors since Correcting is not really as easy as it is in case of oils or acrylics. So it is always better to start off light and then build up the dark with additional layers. It is so much easier to get additional layers and get it darker than to subtract the layers and get it lighter once it is already dark and like I said this is just in case of watercolors a lot of other mediums it does not matter whether you put the light or dark first but in watercolors you always start off from light colors that is the general rule of thumb now like I said I, as I'm moving on to the next layers I'm adding more and more colors and getting more and more vibrant colors into play lots of blues purples greens and browns and yellows depending on the area I am closely following a reference photo from Pixabay although I am um, trying to incorporate two or three different hummingbird reference photos from Pixabay so it is not exactly one particular bird I'm adding a little bit of my imagination to it as well to make it the way or make it look the way I want it to look. That is more fun in a certain way, but you can uh, stay absolutely close to a real to one reference photo. And you can see that as I'm adding more layers, I am leaving some of the paint not really well blended because I want to create textures now. In the subsequent layers I want to create the feeling of small and 
display large feathers. The areas around the head and the beak and the eyes, those are very small, tiny, rounded feathers. And that is how I am creating that area by creating very small dots and lines that kind of give that idea and impression of small rounded feathers. You will see as I move on to the bird's wings or the thorax area or the bottom part of the body, I will uh, not uh, stay my brush strokes will not be that small and tiny and rounded. It will become more and more elongated to indicate the longer feathers because tail feathers, wing feathers, and even feathers in the abdomen and the thorax are much longer than the ones that are around the head, neck area. Um, all over this painting you will see that I'll just build on layer on top of layer on top of layer. Now layering process with watercolor you need to know one trick as well that you have to let the bottom layer dry completely because if you put one wet layer on top of another wet layer they'll blend together and you will end up creating a smudgy blurry look which not always is what you want in the subsequent layers you want some texture you want the look of the feathers you want that rounded specific details of the feather and when you want that you want to put your wet layers on top of absolutely dry layers and also you do not use a lot of brush pressure because if you scrub your brush too hard against the previous layers watercolor is not permanent it will lift off the previous layers so be careful about these two things do, if you are trying to get smaller details you should apply wet print on top of dry print and the other thing is that you do not um, get it too uh, blurry you, you want it to stand out so that's that's what you need to do in case of watercolor so I think those are two basic things about watercolor um, to make it work and also to get the very bright colors it is hard to do in one single layer. It is better to build it, build up the brightness. Start with very light watery layers and then slowly keep adding colors. And sometimes just the contrast makes it look bright. Like you can see that the abdomen and the thorax areas, it is very little color initially. And then in some of the areas, I would add some bright oranges and yellows. Some of the areas I'll make it very bright blue so that those areas stand out so much and the contrast between the lighter and the not so colorful areas um, and with the colorful and brighter areas will stand out so much that that will make your painting your bird pop like I said I'm adding some blues on the back of the head and there you will see that I am adding a lot of texture kind of brush strokes longer brush strokes for the wings shorter for the neck area like I already previously mentioned at this point whatever I'm doing is pretty much the repetition of the previous things that I have done on the other parts of the bird also, in case of watercolor, I always find it much easier to work in smaller areas. And while that small area is still wet, then move on to the adjacent smaller area. So work in smaller areas and go from one area to the next area that is side by side. That way, you, get, you will get a cohesive look with the one area that kind of blends into the other area at the same time you get as much details and as much precision as you want in those layers I'm adding some color in the area that I had left blank previously around the beak that is a part of the background and once those background and the bird is sharpened a little bit more I will move on to the nest and the nestling Sometimes in case of watercolors, it is also important to remove some of the paint that you have already applied and this is easier while the paint is still wet. You can use a brush that is almost just damp and does not have a lot of water on it and 
kind of lift the color in the area that is still wet with that damp brush that is much easier and keep a rag handy so that you can keep wiping the color or water off your brush and keep lifting more layers so if you need to subtract in case of watercolor which is not very easy this is the way to go just use a damp brush and lift some color while it is still wet you can also lift color once it dries because watercolor reactivates with water but it is easier when it is kind of wet on wet adding little color to the nestlings neck and beak you will see that initially all the colors are mar merging together because I am working completely wet on wet. Once I'm done with the wet on wet area, I'm moving on to the bird nest area and letting the nestlings party dry because like I said previously, when, one, when I want to build the details on any area, whether it is the bird's body or the nest, I will work wet on top of already dried paints. So at this point, I'm letting the nestlings neck and beak area dry once it dries then i will add additional layers however in case of the bird nest i want to create a lot of the texture look while it is still wet so that it does not stand out every strand by strand and kind of blends into each other and kind of stands out at certain places so i will do some of the work in the nest wet on wet and then some of the final details I will add dry, wet on top of dry. I'm sorry, sometimes the words just don't come out right from my mouth. So working on the areas around the body of the nestling and I'm keeping it very dark compared to the body of the nestling so that the nestling's head kind of pops out from the surroundings like i said before and i always say in all kinds of painting whether it is watercolor oil acrylic it is much more important than the right colors to get the contrast and in case of contrast i often hype up the contrast much more than that is in my reference photo just to get the brightness um, and get the painting stand out the subject matter stand out from the background like in this case I kept the background very simple very light color because there is already a lot of color a lot of layers in the foreground so I want all the focus of a viewers I go on the bird and the nestling and the nest and not let the background take away any credit so kept it blurry kept it very less colored and also putting a lot of color around the body of the nestling so that it kind of stands out. Now you see that I lifted some of the color off the nestling's body and neck so that it kind of stands out against the dark background of the nest. Creating some textures on already dry paint of the nest. Like in just in case of the body of the bird, in the case of the nest as well I started off with very light colors browns and grays and very dull mauves and then moved on to darker colors and adding a lot of color and texture and in case of the bird nest I wanted it to look very textural just like a hummingbird's nest looks like a hummingbird doesn't create a very aesthetically beautiful nest like probably a weaver's bird does it has a lot of textures and it is very tiny because the bird itself is very tiny and uh, does not lay a lot of eggs and like, eggs are obviously very tiny as well so I wanted to preserve the original look or the right kind of look for a hummingbird's nest and kept it a lot of texture just like there was in the reference photo so um, if you want to paint the same hummingbird you will have to look up hummingbird in pixabay and there are tons of reference photos you can just choose any one or more than one like i did and paint accordingly just adding the last few details on the tail again starting from very light colors and slowly building up layers to the dark and hyping up the contrast between the background and the tail in the foreground like i always do 
once the tail is done the painting will be more or less complete i hope you learned a trick or two of about painting war with watercolors from this particular venture do give me a thumbs up if you like the video and do not forget to subscribe because i post videos twice every week at least and sometimes even thrice so stay tuned for future videos and do not forget to subscribe and smash the bell and give me a thumbs up and stay tuned because i will be coming back soon thank you for watching